Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday morning. Welcome to the simple truth. I am Brother James Lake, Evangelist James Lake, I'm coming to you from Mint Hill, North Carolina. And this is going to be our Thanksgiving message today. We're going to talk about giving thanks. And we're going to talk about what it means as a Christian to always give thanks. But as many of you know, I love the traditional hymn. So here is one of the greats, and it is To God Be the Glory. Listen and praise Him. transport when Jesus we see. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the earth hear his voice. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the people rejoice. Oh, come to the Father through Jesus the Son, and give him the glory. Great things he I love the traditional hymns. I absolutely do. Turn with me in your Bibles, please. We're going to be going to 1 Thessalonians 5.18. I'm going to have a simple message this morning, but hopefully an impactful one. 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 18 says, In everything, in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for Christ who died on the cross for our sins. Father, as we come before you today, we ask you to help our country and help our families. Help us to see the great and wonderful things you've done for all of us, Lord. Help us to see the blessings that we have still being here in America. Father, I pray. that this Thanksgiving we really would sit back and count our blessings and be grateful and thankful for everything you do for us. I would not be here. And I think in the middle of all this madness and insanity how you continue to provide for the needy and heal the sick and you continue to bless. Father, I pray that today somebody would come to Jesus Christ and I pray that somebody would be able to lift themselves out of despair by turning to you 
Our dear Master, thank you for everything you have done for us. Thank you for going to the cross. Thank you for rising again from the dead. Thank you for paying it all. Thank you. And now I ask, as I do every week, if you could just give me one more chance with this stupid muddled tongue to say something on behalf of your kingdom. I know I'm not worthy, and I really would deeply appreciate it now. I dare not do this on my own or of my own strength. Father, I pray that today your name would be lifted up and all the praise and honor would go to you. Thank you for everything. In your son's blessed name we pray. Amen. A lot of times uh, people ask me, well, Brother Lake, what exactly is it? that he expects from us, that God expects from us, what? Huh. What I love about the Apostle Paul is he made things very simple to understand, my friends. He made it very easy. So here it says to the saints at Thessalonica, chapter 5, verse 18 of 1 Thessalonians, in everything give thanks. Everything. What? In your trials and in your tribulations? Yeah. In your pain and in your suffering? Yeah, see, the Apostle Paul was speaking from exist, um, experience. He didn't just say these things. He lived them. I keep telling you about this great man, Paul, because he's the greatest apostle to ever live. He was shipwrecked and beaten and starved and jailed. He was left for dead. And then finally they took his head off for the sake of the gospel. But too many of us turn around and say, oh, I don't have the car that I want. This same apostle said, with food and raiment, therewith learn to be content. This same apostle would turn around and tell us time and time and time again that God loves us and Jesus loves us and that the love of Christ, the love of God is found in Christ toward all of us. And because of that, we are to give thanks for every, in everything. Give thanks. Good times and the bad. Why? Because sometimes those bad times are meant to strengthen you. Sometimes those bad times are meant to make you stronger for a much bigger fight that's coming ahead. Sometimes your character needs to be fortified and your faith needs to be worked. We've been talking about faith and faith is a muscle, a pastor once told us. It's a muscle and if you don't exercise your muscles, they atrophy, meaning they get stiff. They get useless. If you don't exercise a little bit, you get really fat. Really fat. Trust me. I know about being really fat. But when your faith is exercised and you see things happen and you see the hand of God move as you exercise your faith, you can give thanks for some really crazy stuff. Now, I'm not saying it's easy, but what the Apostle Paul here turns around and he says, and again, very simply, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What's the will of God, Brother Lake? This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I'm not talking about your will. This is the will of God. Jesus came and he said, I have not come to do my will, but the will of him who sent me. If the master came to do the will of him who sent me, who are you and who am I? 
This is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. What is the will of God? In everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Not easy. It's not easy when you think the world is coming against you. They are. You are a Christian. You know, I want to point something out. Somebody said the other day, why does God hate those Jews so much and us Christians? Because Abraham was given a promise by God that the seed of David, the seed of David would be our Redeemer. They are hated because all of the earth will be blessed. So they are hated. Satan really hates Israel. But because you and I are grafted into the promise, according to Romans, because we are now grafted into that promise and that redemption through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross, and because it is given to all men freely, you as a Christian come under attack. We're supposed to count it blessings when all kinds of tribulation and things. That's hard to believe, but it's true. And it's not easy sometimes. And everything, everything, give thanks. Brother Lake, what is the word of, what is the will of God? That in everything you would give thanks. That your heart would be so filled with the love of God and knowing that he loves you, that you would sit there and say, Thank you, Lord, for giving me a chance to prove who you are. Sometimes what you're going through is because the scripture says in your weakness, he is glorified. What? He is made strong. People go, wow, look what God's doing in his life. And when you have the peace which passes all understanding, because you've been through a few things, it's easier to give thanks. It really is. I'm not a perfect man. God knows. I don't pretend to be. But I'm one sinner talking to a whole other group of sinners. And if you're out there today, I just want to encourage you that the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you is that in everything you would give thanks. Give thanks for that crazy family you have. Give thanks for a Savior who were getting ready to celebrate Christmas, who became a man who left heaven. Love Christmas. I love the whole season of giving thanks and joy and love. I do. Be thankful for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Be thankful for your wife and your children and your grandchildren. Be thankful if you have a job today. Be thankful if you have food in your house. Be thankful if you can actually give presents to your children and grandchildren. Be thankful even for the smallest piece of bread. I've been very, very poor I have been very, very rich at one time. And um, the older I get, I realize how important the small things really are and how big they are and how thankful I am to God for them all the time. I'm thankful for so many of you who are out there right now. There's a few of you who really do support my family and really do believe in what we are trying to do here. And I'm very grateful for that. I am grateful for social media, even for all of its qualms, because it gives us a chance to communicate to one another and to spread the love of God. One of my favorite hymns, because my mother taught it to us first, is Psalm 100. And verse 4 is one of the few times where the word thanksgiving is actually mentioned. It says, Psalm 100, verse 4, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. 
Why? For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Be thankful. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. I pray that the will of God is done. I pray the will of God is done in this country. I pray the will of God is done in your lives on a daily basis. I pray that the will of God comes to full fruition. Because if it does, then you can't be sad and in despair and upset when you know that you're giving thanks for everything. Most of all, I give thanks that God really does come through. He really does care. And I know it's not easy. I keep saying that, but it's true. But ladies and gentlemen, he will not fail you. Men fail you all the time. But we turn to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We turn to the will of God. And I'm asking you today that that will of God be performed in every one of you. And that this season, be even extra thankful for those who bless you and whom God puts in your life. If you can't see them one-on-one, -on -one, give them a call. Do some Zoom meetings. Do something so that you can tell somebody I love you and I care about you. And you will see the hand of God and the will of God transform lives. Thank you, everybody, this holiday season coming up. Thank you for all your love and your care and your support. And I pray that these sermons continue to bless you on a regular basis. Let's go to prayer. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for Christ who died on the cross for our sins. Father, as we come before you, we ask you today that you would give us a chance to be eternally and truly grateful and thankful for everything we have. May your will be fulfilled in us that we could be thankful in everything. Help us. Give us the strength that we need to be the lights that you've called us to be. Father, if there's one today who doesn't know your Son as Lord and Savior, I pray that today he would come or she would come to profess that faith in Jesus Christ. Help them to pray, dear Lord Jesus. I know I'm a sinner. I receive the free gift of eternal life that Jesus paid for on the cross. I confess my sins. And I know that my sins are washed away. Father, I pray that somebody would put their faith and trust in him today. And that you would give us a peace that passes all understanding. Bless the nation. Bless our families. Bless our president. Help us during this dark time. But even during this, let us be truly grateful for everything. In your son's blessed name, amen. I just want to thank everybody. If you go down into the description, there is a link to the PayPal and to the Cash App. Subscribe, tell your friends. And if you feel like supporting us, I deeply appreciate that too. May God bless each and every one of you. Have a blessed and happy Thanksgiving. And I look forward to some beautiful sermons by the grace of God in this Christmas season. Amen.